It was the mid-1950s and a young singer from Tupelo was taking the country by storm. At the same time, a young preacher was making headlines as the spokesman for the civil rights movement. We cannot in clear conscience turn back in our struggle for justice. Throughout Northeast Mississippi, black families knew about Martin Luther King Jr., but most were busy just trying to survive. Hard times. Hard times. I grew up in a time when uh, I could look up in the ceiling and rain would fall down in some of the houses that we lived in. Or you could look down uh, through a crack in the floor, and if you had chickens, maybe you would see one or two of them. We all worked in the field. We picked cotton, chopped cotton, you know, these type of things. Uh, we had to milk cows by hand and different stuff. And it, it, it was really... I guess you say some of it was hard work, but uh, it was his way of life during that period of time. Eileen Jackson and James Bean have spent virtually all their lives in Northeast Mississippi. When they were teenagers, life for African American families was tough with few opportunities for advancement. They were also treated as second class citizens. You really didn't have a choice. If you wanted a hamburger, you went to the back and bought the hamburger, you went on without the hamburger. As a young man growing up in the shake rag community, Robert Jamison recalls there was an undercurrent of division and racism in the late 50s and early 60s in the area. You could go out uh, some weekend or something like that and you could feel that relationship. People didn't want to be around you. People call you, you know, Tyler, get out of Tupelo. Blacks in Tupelo knew that we had a problem. Even some white business and civic leaders knew there was a problem that had to be addressed. In the late 1950s, Jack Reed Sr. was busy running the store his dad started. He had served his country during World War II, and many of the young men serving valiantly with him were African Americans. As he recalls, they were treated with respect and dignity until they came back home. We came home on the boat together. And I got home one weekend, that next Monday I was right down here on the front of the store in Tupelo. Two of my black friends I waved across the street, they were still in uniform. Mm -hmm. At that time now, they couldn't go to the picture show and sit with the white, they could sit, sit in the balcony. They could not use a public restroom in Tupelo, Mississippi. Some teams just absolutely seemed to be wrong and some things are wrong. Jack Reed Sr. was about to be in the forefront of a movement calling for real and radical change. It would impact virtually all areas of life in Northeast Mississippi and it would also see leaders develop in the African American community who would help mobilize others in the struggle for equality and dignity. In Tupelo, I'm Allie Martin, WCBI News.